good morning students today i am going to talk about young table words this is a short hand method for representing representing product of two fundamental representation or any other representation as sum of other representation so in short young table is a technique of representing all irreducible representation arising from product of two representation of the group the process for young table x is as follows any fundamental representation number 1 any fundamental representation is represented by a any fundamental representation is denoted by box a single box for example two dimension for two dimension representation for su2 representation you will play the box for su3 a box su4 a box su5 a box whatever be the number of different shapes uh, the theory uh, the number of group you have to represent it by a box and number 2 is for any representation there is a conjugate representation we denote it as n star say this representation is n say s u n group we are discussing s u 2 and s u 3 group In the previous class, we have discussed a single table, but as you know, there are six quarks, so we have to switch to a single six. Now, any group, any group, a single from a single two to a single six is represented by a box, and its conjugate representation, conjugate representation. Representation, which is denoted as n star, is represented by a sum of boxes having n minus number one boxes. Then, say, for example, example for SU two, for SU two. Fundamental representation is this, and conjugate representation is also this. To get the point, because two minus one equals two one. So for a single two, box denotes this denotes this equals to two, this equals to two star. But for a single three, this box denotes this equals to three, but This denotes three star, right? Because there are the three minus one equals to two. Or similarly for the other representation. So the main representation is represented by a box. Its conjugate representation is represented by n minus number of boxes in a polar. Now in the young tablets, third important point is if the boxes are in the rows, rows represent symmetry. Symmetry. If a representation is, for example. If a representation is like this, like this, then this is a symmetry, and rows, rows represents symmetric representation, and columns represents 
NPC. NPC. So this is symmetry. This is anti symmetry. And in your interface where both rows and columns are there, they will be mixed. Mixed with presentation, that means uh, there will be symmetric part and there will be an anti symmetric part of Now, the fourth important point is fourth important point is in Young Tab UX, number of boxes in the row below will be equal to or less than the upper row, upper row. Number of boxes in any row in the row in the row below will be number of boxes row boxes in rows below will be equal to or less than equal to or less than upper row as an illustration as an illustration Say this is a young tablet. This is correct because here the number of boxes in the first row is three, in the second row is two, and in the third row, if there is a third row, then this will be one, one or two. So this is correct, but this is incorrect. Say first row and second row. There is one. So this is in time. Right? So in your tablet, the rows, number of boxes in the upper row must be equal to or greater than than the below, the row below it. So this is another important property of human calculus. Now, having these four properties of a new, constructing a new calculus, the, I'm repeating again, the first point is, please write it down in your copy. The first point is, any fundamental representation will be denoted by a box. Second point is, if a any conjugate representation of the fundamental representation is represented by a n minus boxes in a column. For example, for AC2, the fundamental representation and its conjugate representation is same. For AC3, the fundamental representation is denoted by a box and its conjugate representation is by Two box. Number three point is if a representation, if a representation contains only the rows, boxes arranged in a row, then that representation is a perfectly symmetric representation. And if any representation is represented by a column, then it is perfectly anti-symmetric representation. And the fourth and most important point is in young tablet, the number of boxes in the upper row will be lay will be equal to or greater than the number of boxes below its row. Or in other words, number of boxes in a row below will be equal to or less than the upper. So these are the 
four points of properties of Young's WX. We have to construct Young's WX. Once we have constructed Young's WX, now we have to count its dimension. Now, dimension of any representation, fifth point is, you can add up, fifth point is, fifth point is, dimension of the representation, dimension equals to, say, numerator by denominator. And numerator equals to product of product of product of numbers numbers of the boxes assigned to boxes the denominator will be product of Now we will discuss product of number assigned to boxes. What is the number assigned to boxes and what is the hook? So, six point is how to calculate numerator. To calculate numerator in the to calculate numerator, you have to follow the following steps. The steps are number one, the if the representation fundamental representation represented by n, then write n in the first box. First box. First box means top left. Top left. Top left. This is the first box. And increase the value by one. by proceeding along the same row. Right. Say for example, let us take an example. This is an EM template. So first write number n here. So this will be n plus one. This will be n plus two. This will be n plus three. Right. Second point is second point is decrease the value by one while proceeding along the same column. Decrease the value by one by one by proceeding along the pull up. For example, if I, I have written here n, then this will be n minus 1, this will be n minus 2, right? 
and the third point is and the third point is repeat the same for other boxes other rows and columns third point is repeat the same repeat the same process for corresponding rows for other rows and columns right so what will be the number here if we go by this then it will be n if we go by this then it will also be n will be same so what will be this this will be if we approach from this side then it will be n plus n minus sorry n plus 1 and you approach from this side then it will, it will also be n plus 1. and this will be n minus 1, right so the number assigned to the boxes has been computed right so the product so numerator will be equals to numerator equals to number fourth point you may write product of of the numbers numbers in in plus one it is so here numerator will be equals to for this table numerator will be equals to a into n plus one is twice so square n plus 2 is 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 then n minus 1 n is twice so it will be n square also then n minus 1 is square then n minus 2 So this completes the calculation of numerator. It will be uh, easy when we take specific example. Say n equals to two and n equals to three. Okay. Now to calculate the denominator, as we have said, denominator is the number of hooks. So it is the num point number seven. So point number seven is number seven is denominator d equals to product of hooks. No, sorry, the so number to calculate hooks to calculate denominator d. First, we have to know hooks. What is the hooks? Now hook. For each box is a number equal to the number of boxes right to it plus the number of boxes left to it, including that box. For example, if we take The young calculate for the previous young calculate. Say I am I am taking this box. Now what is it? What will be its hook value? Number of boxes. Then we have to draw. This is called hook. So how many boxes are covered by these two? One is horizontal line and one is vertical line. One, two, three, four, five. So its hook value will be five, right? That means the hook value of a box will be number of boxes left to it plus number of boxes down it, down it, including that box. So hook value of this box will be. Say if you have to calculate the hook of this box, 
So one, two, three, so hook all of this is three. Right? So hooks are number of boxes left. Right to E plus number of boxes below it. Number of boxes below it. This is the hook line. So for this. For this young table X, the hook value will be hook value of this will be five, sorry six, this will be five, this will be four, this will be three. Sorry, this will be three. I'm sorry, this will be three. And this will be one. Hook value of this will be three. Plus one, this will be four, this will be three. This will be one, this will be one, this will be two, this will be one. You see that the extreme right bottom boxes has root value one. And denominator, that this is num point number one, and point number two is Denominator will be equal to product of equals to for this example six into five into three into four into three. Into three. So, okay. so once we can once we can we have calculated numerator and denominator. At once we can know its representation. Now let us take specific example so that things will be clear to you. Example. We will consider AC2. Right. So 2 into 2. That means 2 AC2 groups. Particles represented by, represented by AC2 group are multiplied. Means we are taking product of 2 AC2 groups. Then it will be represented by two is represented by a box into another box. Right. Now we have to form with these two boxes. Young table. What is the rule? The rule is the boxes can attach to right and the boxes can attach to left. Uh, below it. So this will be attached to right to this class it can attach below you see only two combinations are there now we have to calculate the dimension of this to representation as you know what is the dimension of this representation we know dimension of this representation is we are writing the value, ascent value. So this value will be 2 and this value will be t, 3 for numerator. And for denominator, we will need hook values. I am writing the hook values just outside the box. So its hook, hook value will be 2 and its hook value will be 1. And for this, the number will be this number will be equal to 2 and this number will be equal to 1. Its hook value will be equal to 2, its hook value will be equal to 1. Right? So, this 
this represents into 2 into 3 by 2 plus 2 into 1 by 2 into 1. So, 3 plus 1. So, we write finally 2 into 2 is equal to 3 plus 1. That means 2 SU2 representation, product of 2 SU2 representation will be a representation whose dimension is 3 plus a representation whose dimension is 1, only 1. There is no other combination. Number 2, SU3, we are taking SU3. Right? So 3 into 3. What will be there? So, 3 is represented by a box into another box. The same here will, will go. There will be two boxes plus side by side and two boxes, two boxes up and down. Now, its value will be 3 and this will be 4. The hook value will be 2. This will be 3, this will be 2, which will be value will be 2, 1. So this representation is 3 into 4 by 2 plus, this will be 3 into 2 by 2. So this is equal to 6 plus 3. So finally we get 3 into 3 equal to 6 plus 3. Number 3. We are taking conjugates. Say 3 into 3 star means this is a conjugate replacement. Then it will be into conjugate representation for SU3 will be represented by two boxes. Now you can attach. How can we attach these two boxes? You can attach this box here, but you cannot attach the attach it here. Okay. But you can attach just below it. So the things will be two box side by side and one box below plus three boxes up and down. Right? There are other combination that means one box up upper and two boxes in the lower row is not permissible according to the rule of so now we have to calculate the dimension, right? What is the dimension of this? So this will be three, this will be four, this will be two, and hook value will be this will be three, this will be one, one, right? For this three, two, one, hook value three, two. So this representation will be 3 into 4 into 2 by 3. Plus this representation will be, of course you know it will, it will be 1. No need to tell. So it will be 8 plus 1. Right. Now from this example, you can see that the knowledge the mesons will form octet and a singlet. This eight represents the octet, meson octet, and there will be a singlet because quarks are made. Sorry, the mesons are made with quark and antiquark. Antiquark is conjugate of quark. So from here we have already learned in the previous classes, previous class, that there are mesons octet. There are also barium octet and barium decoplet. We'll come to that. How these things are coming for the time being. From this example number three, we see that 
for water and an antiquar combination if there is a particle that exists in nature with their neutrons combined with what an antiquar then there will be an octet and a singlet this and now from this this is this octet will be not totally symmetric but mixed symmetric and as this is separated by a coulomb it will be totally anti-symmetric so a singlet state the meson singlet state of the meson will be totally anti-symmetric now come to the next example example number 4 when three quarks are combined together example number 4 three into three into right so now we use this thing this has been done So first use this, right? This has been done like this. Plus, right? We know it's representation. This is this. This. Now. A third box. Actually, there there is a plus sign. Two two operations are there. A third box. This can add here. Plus this can add below it. But one up. And two below is not allowed. That means it cannot go up. It will go down or in the right direction. Plus, this will be up and down. Sorry, I'm sorry. Plus. Now calculate the dimension. Its dimension will be three, four, five, and whose value is three, two, one, three, four, two. Whose value is three, one, one, and this will be same. So we have done it. It will be same. This is three, two, one. Whose value is three, two. So no need will be one. So it will be. I'm just making it a brief. So it will be ten plus. You know this is eight plus eight plus one. So three into three into three, three quarks gives the representation. One is the couplet, which is perfectly symmetric, right? Because it is represented by a row, and these two are octets, mixed symmetry. And this one is singlet, anti-singlet. So how Daniel decouples and by Young tablet, we, we are without going into detail of it. We can say mm -hmm. that with the help of Young tablet, tablets, well, that if the if, if there is a particle. Exist in nature, but combination of three quarks, then the number of particles, particles having similar characteristics, 
will be like this. There will be one couplet, two octets, and a Now, for the next representation, as you know, number of box till date has been increased to six. There are six box, so we have to clearly consider SU6 group. So for SU6, For SUC, six into six will be. I'll be leaving it as as X. Do it. Homework. I'm giving it. Homework. Do it. Do it. For SU four, four into four, into four. I'm leaving it as a number. How many representations or how many representations will be there? Once we extend our logic to the higher dimensional group theory. You have heard about the resonance particles in your previous elementary particle classes. That there are resonance particles, means very short lived particles, but these particles do age. So for a small interval of time, but, but their presence cannot be ignored. So for these particles, SU6. More than SU2, the SU4, SU5, SU6. There. So, with this, we complete the class of group theory. Next, we will move to the next topic, which is symmetries in physics. You need to go to the chapter number four of Griffith for this discussion. There are three discrete symmetries. There are also continuous symmetries in physics. But first, we will consider the Next class, the three symmetries which are very important for particle physics and which we call the discrete symmetry, and which we call the parity, charge conjugation, and combining these two with CP, charge conjugation. Parity is denoted by P and charge conjugation. There is a symmetry, CP symmetry, charge conjugation into parity, and time reversal. This is also symmetry. Combining these three is called CPT symmetry. We will come to CPT theorem also. But before that, let us discuss briefly about the Role of symmetries in physics. In physics, from your UG classes, you came to know that there are many conjugation laws. Now, a scientist called Neuther, Neuther. He, he has realized a beautiful law of nature and which is known as Neuther's theorem. 
this theorem states that for every symmetry there is a conservation law if nature poses a symmetry then there must be a conserved quantity for that symmetry for example if we have symmetry translation of symmetry then translation in space if there is a translational symmetry then you know from your easy classes there is conservation of linear momentum if there is a rotational symmetry then you know there is a conservation of angular momentum and if there is symmetry in time transformation in time that means laws of physics are invariant in forward time and backward time which is the case, which is the case then there is a very important conservation law you know the conservation of energy so conservation of energy conservation of linear momentum conservation of angular momentum basically come from three symmetry one is rotation what is translational symmetry in space one is rotational symmetry in space another is translational symmetry in time in particle physics what is important j is the symmetry in gauge transformation what is gauge transformation we will discuss in the later class just for this if nature is symmetry that means equation of motion which is represented by say newton's laws of motion and later it is replaced by lagrangian equation of motion will reduce lagrangian equation of motion for particles and fields so if lagrangian is invariant that means its equation of motion is invariant that means physics is invariant under gauge transformation then the charge is the conserved quantity that is amount of charge is a conserved quantity so all these things are known as by theorem called noether's theorem which states that for every symmetry in nature there is a corresponding conserved law now let us move to the symmetry of parity parity is an important thing in particle physics but before that let us discuss briefly about the symmetry that exists in nature say the first symmetry has and back as realized is that proton and neutron their mass are so close to each other and in nucleus these are transforming into each other that means protons are transforming to neutrons and neutrons are transforming to protons so these two particles are basically manifestation of a single particle and we call it nucleus and correspondingly we gave a term called isospin and gave proton isospin z component of the isospin plus half for the proton and minus half for the neutron so proton is represented by 10 a 
vector and neutron is dependent by zero one. In isospin space, proton is represented by, you know, proton is represented by half half, and neutron is represented by half minus. Means this is I, this is I. I is half, both of two, which proton and neutron, both of them have hydrogen. J component of isospin only very for these two particles. Now we have introduced a SU2 group for repeating neutron and photon. Because if we combine Just a if two quarks are there for constructing neutron and proton, you know, from the U and B, these two quarks will be needed for the neutron and proton. Three quarks, but flavor, two types of flavor, 2D1D or 2D1E, constitute in and E. Now, isospin symmetry means that both have isospin one half. Means that in isospin space, the AC2 group has the role to transform one spin space, isospin space to other isospin space. For other multiplex, for isospin space, we have a triplet pi z plus pi zero and pi minus. So it's isospin is plus one. So there are three, so it's isospin is one. So it will be a component plus one, it will be zero, and this will be minus. I think this is so I value of what this triplet will be equal to one. So I value is one. Then I value of lambda is for lambda for lambda I value is zero. Why you say this? Because because as the photon and neutron has been denoted by this, so pi can be denoted by pi plus can be denoted by one. Pi zero, one zero. Pi minus one minus. So correspondingly, there will be these two places. There will be states lambda which is denoted by zero. zero. So this is totally an isometric state. For delta. There are four particles or delta. Four particles there delta plus plus, delta plus, delta zero, and delta minus. So, what will be its isospin value? Of course, this isospin value will be equal to 3 by 2. This will be half, this will be zero, this will be minus. I think. So I value will be equal to this. I value will be equal to zero. So the particles can be now represented by this particle can be represented by this particle can now be represented by two by two. Two by two is half. Two by two half. This is represented by three 
charge will be equal to i3 plus half a plus s a plus s where a is the radial number and s is the strange number now the next what we will learn do is that for a reaction process for pyrenucleonous scattering there six processes which is elastic and there are four processes which are charge exchange but but these processes are actually equivalent in the next class we will consider how the idea of combining of Size in vectors. Idea of combining of sizes in vectors will come to a nice conclusion. 